Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Nehemiah chapter 2 is where we begin. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1. Remember, you can study all of God's Word with me anytime that you want to, as much as you want to, using my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen from four complete series going on five at thebibleversebyverse.com where you can study any part of the Bible that you want to or begin in the beginning and go all the way through the end. However you want to do it, all you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word to thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. It was not a good idea to be sad in the presence of any king back in those days. But Nehemiah couldn't hide his feelings because of what was going on back home. Things were not good. Two, wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very much afraid. Yeah, well, like I said, you don't want to be sad in the presence of a king, which is why he was afraid. The king asked Nehemiah, why are you looking so sad? Nehemiah kind of answered the question himself, and he was right. I should say the king kind of answered the question himself, and he was right, because it was sadness of heart. Nehemiah, too, like I said, was afraid. And even a spiritual person like Nehemiah will have a sad, troubled look if they're being torn apart on the inside. And don't say that's a sign of not being spiritual. That's not true. 3. And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and its gates are consumed with fire? Nehemiah answers, why should, I, why should I not be sad? My country's a mess. That's why I'm sad. There'd be something wrong with Nehemiah if he was not sad. Four. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Of course, Nehemiah's first reaction was to pray silently to God. He didn't have time for a long, drawn-out, formal prayer. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, I beseech thee, O Lord. No, it was just a quick, silent prayer in his mind to God. And of course, that's fine. That's, that's a, you know, that's, that's an effective prayer, especially if you mean business. And God read his mind. And he will answer. Verse 5, And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant hath found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. Nehemiah asked for a temporary transfer because he's not interested in going to Israel for a visit. Instead, he wants to go to fix things up. Six, and the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. The king knew a good man when he saw one, and Nehemiah was a good man. And the king not only gave Nehemiah permission to go, but he let Nehemiah set the date for his return because he trusted him, because Nehemiah was proven to be a God-fearing man. If you want to be trusted, 
than be a God-fearing man and woman because that will give you integrity and integrity will allow people to believe what you say and even if you can't say anything at the time they'll trust your integrity that you will make the right decision verse 7 moreover I said to the king if it please the king let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river that they may let me pass through till I come unto Judah. These letters would prove to anyone who might stop him on his journey that Nehemiah had not run away. Verse 8, And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which is near to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good, la good hand of my God upon me. He says that a lot, doesn't he? According to the good hand of God upon me. And that's because he knew that God was sovereign. And God was in control of all things. And God's the one who brings blessings. Any type of good comes from God. And it should be acknowledged. The king was cooperating. But there was no sense in returning to Israel if he couldn't rebuild the place. And he couldn't rebuild the place without material, so he asked for it. And since it was God's will that this be done, the king granted Nehemiah what he needed. 9. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Nehemiah gladly accepted whatever help and protection that the king provided. And the king even provided an escort with Nehemiah. Sometimes God works through people to bless his people. 10. Then Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant of the Ammonite heard of it. it it's, I should say when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly. And there had come to and there had come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. That's what they that's what uh, grieved them, that there came a man to help the welfare of Israel. And that man was Nehemiah. It's good to remember that being in God's will does not mean that everyone will recognize it or everyone will agree with it. Sanballat and Tobiah did not agree with what Nehemiah was doing, even though Nehemiah was right in the middle of the Lord's will. 11. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man, what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me except the beast that I rode upon. What God called Nehemiah to do was between him and God at this point. And sometimes it is best to keep the things private that God wants you to do. Keeping it private can sometimes lessen opposition. And you don't have to deal with well, and you also don't have to deal with well-meaning people who don't understand why you're doing it. Something should be just kept between you and God. 13. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the jackals well, and to the dung gate, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down and its gates were consumed with fire. Nehemiah checked out several areas that needed repairs, possibly to know how much material he would need to do the job. And Nehemiah did this at night, again, keeping his mission a secret between him and God. 14. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. The city was a mess. 
It was as if, it was as if a, a tornado had ripped through that area. And there were some areas that were so bad that his horse could not even get through. 15. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. Nehemiah spent the better part of the night inspecting the wall of Jerusalem, possibly going around the entire wall, which was long. Nehemiah returned home before sunrise in order to keep his plan secret. 16. And the rulers knew not where I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest who did the work. Nehemiah kept his plan a secret from everyone, including the rulers. Nehemiah did not want to say anything until he understood himself about everything that had to be done. 17. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more reproached. It's time to talk to the people. And he does. It was disgraceful how the city of God was in such a terrible condition because in some places it was all just a pile of rubble. And Nehemiah is determined more than ever to rebuild it, not only for the people, but for God because that was his command. He wanted that city rebuilt. 18, and I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, and also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Nehemiah wanted the leaders to know that this rebuilding project was not just his idea. When they understood that God was with Nehemiah, that opened many doors and provided many helpful things to Nehemiah. And everybody was excited. They were willing to cooperate because they knew that they were doing the Lord's work. And if a person, if people, I should say, are filled with the Holy Spirit in love with Jesus Christ, they will cooperate with one another to do that which is honoring to Jesus. So much of getting along revolves around the people involved being on fire for Jesus Christ and walking in the Spirit. If you walk in the flesh, nobody's going to get along with anybody because self is too prominent. 19. But when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? These unsaved people laughed at them. And they also falsely accused them of rebelling against the king by, re, by rebuilding the wall. Yeah, Same old story. Mockery and lies trying to discourage them. They are rebelling, re, rebelling against the king by doing this. Well, that's already been settled more than once. But it keeps coming up because if you repeat a lie enough times, some people are going to believe it. 20. Then I answered them and said unto them, The God of heaven will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. In other words, Nehemiah says it's none of your business. None of your business. These scoffers and unbelievers did not know God and they did not serve God. So what Nehemiah and company did for God was none of their business. And it wasn't. So carry on. And we'll stop right there. If you want to study the whole Bible with me, you can or any part of the Bible. You can do that at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, going on five plus much more at thebibleversebyverse.com. To be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, just pray for me and God's Word. That immediately 
makes you a part of this ministry. And also, when you take a break from studying, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long.